So Mike Gervin has an excellent YouTube channel called Excel is Fun, and I've watched many of these videos, um, and he's very creative solutions. I saw one last night called Excel Magic Trick 1122 Repeat Row Headers. Great solution. I just had a different idea. So I'll show you the idea that I had. And uh, bas I didn't, wasn't even sure how to, what to call this. Uh, create vertical repeating list. So here's what we have. We have the fruits, uh, four different fruits here. Uh, we have you know some days across the top. All the ones, all, all the grapes, you know, all the different fruits here, they have either a one or a blank in the cell. So what we want to do is repeat grape twice in our list because we have a, two different ones. Repeat the orange three times because it's there three times, the prune once, and the banana five times. So you see all these different methods do it. We're repeating it as necessary. So I'm just going to walk you through the steps here of how I did this. Uh, so the first step is this. We want to add the condition so it cells that have a one. That's what we're really doing here. Um, notice how the whole thing will change down here if I put another one in there. Now we have three grapes, so it's supposed to be dynamic that way. We take it away and re grapes down to two. So the very first thing is the condition right in here. This is the array condition that this area here has to be equal to a one. Now. When it's true, this is the tricky part. So step two is really the tricky part. How do we distinguish the ones uh, for the different fruits? Because right now, if you just look at all these ones over here, we don't really know which ones. I mean, it's the same row, but somehow we have to get that logic into our formula to make it easy to extract all these guys one by one. So I'll click back in here. This is sort of where the magic happens. Uh, we're, we're saying here, well, take these values and multiply the first row, which is row 12, the first row of our array, by a 1. Take the second row, which is going to be row 13, these guys, the ones that are 1s, three of them, multiply it by 2. Uh, the prune, there's only one of them, multiply it by 3, and then by a 4. So let's see if I can go in here and highlight all of this and press the F9 key on the keyboard so you see what we have. So sure enough, we have two ones for the grapes, we have two twos, uh, actually no, three twos, two, two, a false, false, and another two for the oranges, one, three for the prune, and now we have five fours for the bananas. So bananas are on the fourth item, the fourth fruit that we have. So we have five of them, five fours. So that's going to come in handy in the next step, because step three is saying, let me just press the escape here, escape key. Uh, Step three is extract our positional numbers out of the array. So we have what we want in here. Let's just do this one more time. Highlight this, press the F9 key. But how do we get all of these numbers out of there one by one? So that in the end, we can show the fruits. Well, we, we're going to use the small function around the whole thing. So here's our small function, and it says, give me an, a bunch of numbers. In this case, it's a, a real array, like an array formula. So out of all those numbers, give me the smallest one first. That's what this thing at the end does. Give me the smallest one. So now I'm just going to press, highlight this whole thing, press the F9 key, and you see, of course, it's a 1. If I were to come down here further down the list, the banana, well, that would be a 4, because the banana is the fourth fruit in our list. So let's just highlight this whole part, press the F9 key, and of course, we get a 4. So let's click that last step. We want to display our answers. Well, in the end, the index is just this little, see how it's blue here? And it's blue over around this area. Of those four items, which one do we want? Well, we're telling it, give me the fourth one. So that's how this whole thing works. Uh, we just basically want to get 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. And then we just index and pull out those different things, the different fruits. Now, we have method two here. So method two, I just do, uh, I'm going to replace this hard-coded array constant. This is called an array constant. Now, we want to make it a little bit more dynamic. So here in the second method, a little more complicated, but no worries. We can, I'm just highlighting the area here, one, two, three, and four instead of typing in 1, 2, 3, 4. A little bit quicker to do. Um, but 
The thing is, if we were to insert another row in here and it became 5 or 6, we'd have to change this, extend it. So even this method, method 2, isn't really that fully dynamic. This is the method that I like, method 3. Now we're going to go in here and I just sort of put some spaces around this so you could see it easier. But this portion right here, we want to make it fully dynamic and we're going to use an offset. And basically, to make a long story short, this whole offset, this whole thing right there, what it does is it says, well, it looks up here and it says we have four fruits. So go over here and get four numbers. If we were to insert two more fruits, it would say, wait a minute, now we've got, see this count uh, formula right here? It's saying, wait a minute, now we have six fruits or seven fruits, and that is our height of our offset. With this part highlighted, if I press the F9 key, now we get a four. But uh, it's basically however many we have here, that's the height of this. And now if I show you this whole offset, highlight it, press the F9 key, there's the same thing, one, two, three, four. But now it's fully dynamic. So let's test this whole thing, see if I know what I'm talking about here. I'm going to highlight this row 14, and this has to be in the middle somewhere. I could insert it here or here but in the middle below the grape and above the banana. It could even be in there. Let's do it there. I insert this. I'm going to put in, notice how there's errors here, but the only issue is that it can't be blank. So I'm going to put apple. And now I have to do one more thing. I'm going to put a one in here. And we got some kind of, ah, this is the thing. Method one, I almost forgot. Method one and method two won't work. This is the only method that will dynamically sort of update. And let's go back to this guy, this offset. Uh, we highlight this whole thing, press the F9 key, no problem. It automatically updates to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These guys only have 4, so the array won't work. I could come in here, drag it down to 5, and then Control-Shift-Enter, drag this all the way down, and it will update. This guy would have to come in here and type semicolon, five, control, shift, enter, and drag this down. So one little extra step, and this will work uh, no matter what. And you could even add rows at the top, because we're not dependent on the rows or the row function, which people often use. I'm using this simple counter over here. Uh, so let's put in one more. I don't even know what fruit I could put in here, but let's just, let's put in, uh, I guess we'll put in watermelon, who knows watermelon. So once again, these guys aren't working, but this works just fine. Let's put in one of them and see how this nicely updates. And as Mike mentioned in his video, one last thing. What if you don't want to see these errors? Um, he made a really good comment that you shouldn't really rely on, like in a big data set, you wouldn't want to put the if error, because I think it, it will evaluate the whole thing, which is not very efficient. Um, Let's take this little thing here, just like Mike had it. And there, basically, I always tell people, you want a way to make it easy for your heavy formula to st simply stop and not do all of this complicated stuff. So let's do this. We are going to count the number of items that we have. Currently, we've got, let's see, six of them. So let's use a very simple if statement, which is much, much simpler than, you know, doing the whole thing to determine if we should stop or not. So if this value, our counter, is greater than this, and I'm going to lock that, simply put double quote, double quote, which means stop. Else, continue with this whole long formula. So now I put the last bracket in for me. I drag it down and look at that. Something has gone wrong here. Let me fix it. Ah, I know exactly what went wrong. This should not be... Uh, counting those. It should be summing up all the ones. That's really w how this works. Um, so let's do this. Let's just change this, move it over to here, and then just go like that, extend it. Now I press enter, and what it should do, let's check it really quickly and we'll be done. Two grapes, true, a watermelon, there's one of them, three oranges, uh, one prune, one apple, and five bananas. Perfect.